Today we're in the shop and we're gonna uh, I'm gonna show you a a <clears throat> quick and easy way to create a flat pattern um, to put onto some sheet metal and uh, and then create a create a sheet metal part of a of a non-flat surface. Um, so the goal here I want to make a cover that covers that fits in to this area uh, defined by these perimeter tubes. And they're not on the same plane. This is a straight one, but it's angled. This one has a, has a bend in it. This one has a bend in it. And then this is a, a straight line. So if you're to try and trace this out onto some card, directly onto some cardboard or something, you can, you can do it that way. It's a, it's a real kind of a pain in the rear end because you gotta kind of hold it and start roughing it out and then try defining your, your trim marks and everything later on. It's it's not the easiest way to do it, and uh, it's not that accurate. So this is a uh, this is a method. Um, I think it's actually called a flexible shape pattern, um, developed by a guy named Ren Shellen, I think his name is, um, and I've used it quite extensively. It works it works quite well. And it's really simple and it's really quick to do. So what we start off with is using some just some painter's tape. This is this low tack painter's tape. Um, you just start laying out the area with tape. And the only trick to doing this is don't overlap the tape. Just get the tape close to the to the, the previous one that you've just put on and just start filling in the area. And the reason you don't want to overlap the tape is that this stuff is not very sticky. It's it's not meant to to be a permanent type of tape. It's a painter's tape. It's meant to peel off. So if you overlap these, um, when you try and take the whole thing apart, it'll start to fall apart on you because the, the tape will be sticking to itself where you've overlapped it and it's not a very good bond. So the whole thing will get kind of messy. You'll see on the second stage uh, why this, why it works that way. Now my finished part won't actually cover the whole thing. It's probably going to end down here somewhere, but it's easier to just, to just make the whole thing and, and then worry about that later. So this is the uh, it's it's actually a two a two step affair and this is the second step. So this is painters tape, green stuff. Now what we use is is a packing tape um, that has um, fiber in it. Uh, like it doesn't stretch at all. It it's very stiff in the long direction because it's got these fibers in. And we just start putting this over top of the packing tape. Now this stuff we do overlap. Because we want it to stick to itself. And we want it to stick to the painter's tape underneath. And we put it on at an angle to the first one. So 45 degrees or 90 degrees works. Either one doesn't matter. This particular template is you know just a quick and dirty one and it's never going to be used again it's just going to go in the garbage when i'm done so i'd only do i'll only do this second layer of tape in in one direction if this was going to be something you were going to make multiple copies of and you wanted to keep if you wanted to keep this thing over the years um then you would do a second layer going back in 90 degree angle to the uh, to the first layer. 
but I don't need that. So we're just going to do one one direction. And so because you're only doing this, each piece of tape is only three quarters or an inch or whatever wide, whatever the material, whatever the tape is that you're using, and it doesn't matter what you use. Actually, the, the narrower the tape, the more accurate your results are because you get le less puckering. But this will give you a true shape of the material. Uh, if, if you've got something with a, like a car fender or something like an old hot rod car fender with, uh, with uh, a lot of curves and a lot of bulbous shape in it, this stuff will copy that shape perfectly. Okay, so we could uh, we could just strip this all off now in one piece and then and then trim it later. But uh, I'm going to trim it right on the part, right on site. It's a little bit quicker that way. So I want I want my finished pattern, even though the the material is probably going to be a little bit smaller than that. I want my material I want my pattern to go down the center line of the tubes. Of all the tubes and this one I've already placed it right where I want it anyways so just to, to, to define that line I'm just going to take some uh, some other white masking tape and I'm just going to put it on So there's my trim lines, and I'll just take an X-Acto knife, and we'll just cut right down those trim lines. And now we should be able to just peel off this excess material. Okay, so there we have, there's a near perfect template that fills in that area and we can just peel this off. And this is where you can, you can see it wanting to lift off the painter's tape. You want to take the painter's tape with it. And that's where if you have the painter tape overlapping onto each other it will you'll really struggle to get that off because it it just will not stick it'll it'll all just start coming apart on you There we go. Now the thing to do now is this thing is still kind of sticky on the back side. Um, just take it 
and uh, put some powder on it. Put some talcum powder on it or baby powder or cornstarch works too. Anything just, to, just so that it's not so sticky. Okay, so there's our pattern. I put some talcum powder on it to make it uh, so it does so it's not so sticky. And if, so if this is my sheet of um, aluminum, which is I'm going to use, or steel or whatever you're going to make your part out of, there's your pattern. It just folds out. You can just trace that out, cut it out, and start making your part.